Uh, I'm CJ Mathers. This is Greg. We're with Tunani Faithful. Hi, and Tunani. Thank you. Thank you for. I follow you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely want to talk about some Dragon Ball. Sweet. Uh, what's it been like, pretty much, voicing both Goten and Videl through the years, and like getting to watch them kind of grow, not in, not just through Dragon Ball Z, but with Dragon Ball Super also in the mix as well. It's it's unbelievable. Okay, so keep in mind, I have been voicing Goten and Videl for 20 years. So literally half my life, I have been voicing these characters. And um, it is such a gift that is given to voice actors to be able to sit with characters for that amount of time. It's extremely rare, unheard of. Um, typically, if you get a new show, you, I mean, it may be a few months. Maybe it's a, f you know, a few seasons. You might go five years if you're really, really lucky. Um, I can't, I mean, I'm sure there, the, the series are out there, but typically at some point, the, the voice actors are changed out. So this has been like an incredible run with these characters, which means that I have gotten to grow with them. Um, and it's interesting that, so Videl for me, I feel like we've had these somewhat, like I, I find so much of myself in her. And I think a lot of women specifically, I think a lot of people can say the exact same thing where it's like, I feel like a kinship. Um, and there's so many things about her personality that I'm very much drawn to and I, I kind of see within myself. And so, um, and yet I, we've had this kind of similar, like I see us both of starting out very young and no, I can do this. And don't you tell me that I can't do something and I'm just as strong as you are. And I feeling like I had something to prove just like Vidal. And then growing up into an adult and I was pregnant when I voiced Battle of Gods and she announced her pregnancy. And of course I was hormonal, so I bawled like a baby. Um, when I was like, wait, we're about to announce a pregnancy here? Um, and I'm sitting there with my own little, you know, my own little Goten. Um, and so I, like, it, it's just been very personal. Um, you know, because it's so personal and super, I'm ready to see her regain some of her spunk. Um, I, I love that she's a great mom and I love that she cares about her family and puts them first. But at the same time, I'm like, but yeah, girl, don't forget, you know, just because you're a mama doesn't mean you can, you know, that everything has to slow down. Um, so I'm, I'm very much hoping for something in the future that remind, we, allows me to bring back my girl. Uh, there's one episode in Super specifically where she um, is defending her daughter, and I'm like, you! Yeah. And, and I, tell, I remember leaving the session, and I was like, oh my god, I feel like I just put on my favorite pair of shoes. <laughs> you know, it was like, now she's back. Now I feel comfortable in this. Um, as far as Goten for 20 years, um, he ha we've been through so many like story arcs and so many things where he was always this kind of fun character for me to voice, and then I had a little boy. And there was something about having a little boy that, like, oh, that's how real little boys act. That's what they sound like. This is how this actually works. Um, and I was very, um, also, I get that, I get how, this show's just become so big, you know, and I'm so lucky to be a part of it, and I want to leave this legacy for my kiddo. Uh, and this is something that he can now have and watch, and, and he tells people all the time, he's like, I watch so much Dragon Ball, I watch so much Dragon Ball, and I'm like, he's never seen Dragon Ball, he's three. It's a way too violent, this kid's never seen Dragon Ball, so. Um, so, but I rewrite a lot of the scripts in Super. I change the voice slightly, because now I know what little boys sound like. Um, and so I wanted to make him a real little boy, uh, my little Pinocchio. Uh, and I rewrite a lot of the scripts to be things that my kiddo says. Um, and he'll say something funny at home and I'm like, oh. and then like the perfect scene will come up in Super and I'm like, can we rewrite it to be more like this? Or what about, uh, my kid says it's like, uh, I know when Goten sees Goku Black for the first time, I don't remember what the original script said, but we changed it to, because this was my kid's favorite thing to say at the time, is he would go, what the what? And so I changed it to that. Uh, and it's just little little moments in there that I, I just feel like, uh, I can't wait to tell him when he's older, like, that was because of you. Like, that was, <laughs> so uh, again, I mean, to, to have the character like grow into a mom and have me grow into a mom and then have this little boy and now I have this little boy like I feel this new parallel with the show that I could have never have felt 20 years ago and it's really special. You're welcome. Hi there, I'm Eva Bono and this is... I'm Kim. Hi, <laughs> hi Kim. <laughs> uh, we're from Boston Bash Biggie and I'm also the host of the No Borders No Race J-Pop and Alternative Podcast Show. Awesome. And. Um, a little bit latching onto that, and I want to know your personal opinion on how, with the success of recently with like Dragon Ball at the box office, like 
reaching levels of like millions of dollars in ways that people didn't even expect. How do you feel that not just Dragon Ball, but anime as a whole has evolved within both like the eye of anime fans and the mainstream realm? Okay, and I can give the perfect answer for this. Um, earlier this morning, I was asked to come to a private meet and greet because the defensive line of the New England Patriots are really big Dragon Ball Z fans. Huh. And I was kind of a surreal moment. I'm not a sports fan, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I recognize really, really big dudes when I see them. Um, and I walked in, I'm like, you guys are really ginormous. Um, and they were so nice, but I was, we did this kind of everyone goes around the room and they're big fans of Naruto, so like Yuri Lowenthal and um, you know Tara's there and Richard Epcar and like everybody's there and uh, Johnny Young Bosch. And so we're going around the room and everyone's introducing themselves and they get to me and I'm like, I'm sorry guys, this is super surreal because I've been doing this, like I said, half my life. I remember what it was like when people were like, okay, so what's like the most popular thing you voice? You're a voice actor, you know, you always have to prove your worth. So it's like, what's the best thing you've ever done? And I said, well, probably the most well known is this show called Dragon Ball Z. I mean, maybe 50-50 that they might go, yeah, never heard of it. Um, not the case anymore. I was in my yoga class the other day and something came up, I've been there forever, and something came up about my job. And I'm like, oh, I'm a voice actor. Are you a voice anything? And I was like, probably nothing anyone here has ever heard of. And they're like, well, what? Dragon Ball Z. And like, they were asking for my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. Um, we, I'm never gonna forget when the Cleveland Browns did the um, fusion dance in the end zone after a touchdown. I was like, oh my gosh, I am, like the validation is intense. Like, um, you know, and then we were in the Macy, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade just like shortly thereafter. And it's like, I'm blown away. No, the, the way that this has evolved, um, I mean, not only are we allowed to evolve as actors, but I'm actually getting to watch the fandom evolve. Um, doing panels now are completely different. Like the questions that are being asked are so thought provoking and, and enjoyable. Um, and, and it's just been this, Incred again, it's such a rare experience as an actor to actually get to grow with people and, um, and have people actually care about what you're doing in your life. Um, it's amazing. It's been an amazing experience. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alex Nutting of the Geekly Grind. Hi. Hi. Dragon Ball Z, as we kind of surmised right now, <laughs> is a really world-renowned It's crazy! Um, <laughs> yes. Loved by fans. Have you felt any pressure being part of the series? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, that's changed. That's changed so much. Um, and, and keep in mind, as actors, we're evolving because it, like, it literally feels like this is something we're very comfortable with and we've been doing for a really long time. Um, all of a sudden, everybody knows it. And all of a sudden, like people care. Like we're having to check ourselves in ways that, that we're not used to having to, to think about, you know? Um, you know, at conventions, being, you know, just being cognizant of um, there might, there could be a camera on you at all times. I mean, fortunately, I'm a super boring human being, so like nothing, <laughs> nothing ever comes of, of anything with me. But, um, you know, it just, again, it's like, yes, it, you have to kind of change your own way of thinking. I've always thought of this as like, you know, I'm just some like, I'm, I'm just, it's like normal, which I still am, just this like, I'm a mom. I'm here, it's cool, but I do have to think about it differently. I have to think about social media differently. Um, you know, the, the way that we're having to present ourselves, um, the, the messages that we're getting on social media, you know, uh, whereas before, like, I don't know, I, it is a completely different um, scenario. You, um, I kind of wish that, I kind of wish someone could have taken us all in a room before this really exploded and said, okay, hang on, we're gonna teach you guys how to do this and how to, um, you know, uh, we're gonna teach you about PR. That would have been a lovely thing, <laughs> you know? Um, and so we're kind of left to our own devices because I think that what is forgotten a lot of times, and, and I've had this discussion even this weekend, is that um, we're just super normal, real people. Uh, because, you know, a lot of times we get associated either, either with our characters or there's this assumption that we kind of live more glamorous lives than what we actually live. 
Um, and we're just starving actors, man. We're just like voice actors that, that uh, you know, everybody has something different. People have different jobs. You know, I'm really lucky I do this full time. Um, I, I own my own production studio, so I, all day, every day, I'm a voice actor. But most of the stuff I do is not that exciting. Um, it, it is to me, but nobody's going to bring me out to a convention for it. So, uh, like, recently, one of my biggest clients um, brought me out to their headquarters because we were meeting about a really big project that we were doing. And I went there in full business mode. Like, it was my first time to actually be given a work agenda. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have a schedule. Um, i got to pay attention. And I was really nervous to get there. When I got there, they all showed up with their Dragon Ball stuff for me to autograph. And I was like, <laughs> mind blown. I didn't even know how to handle I was so taken aback that I had to... I had to kind of switch my focus from like, hi, I'm professional character, to like, no, I'm just an actor. <laughs> it's, it's this crazy, I'll sign your pop. <laughs> so it was really, it, it's been this um, constant evolving. Uh, we're learning as we go. We are learning as we go, because this is, we're kind of breaking ground in some ways um, to, to have something, to sit with something for so long. Like, we're not coming on to some show that's like, oh, I know, I'm, I'm mentally prepared for how big this is going to be. No, none of us were prepared for this. I mean, we're grateful like crazy, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I guess I'll jump on. Jump on. Uh, so, I'm David Lozada from Team Gamer. Hello, Hello. Nice, to nice to meet you. Thank you guys for all being here. Thank you. Uh, so, talk, getting back to the history, you know, your history of the show, uh, how were you originally cast in uh, Dragon Ball? <laughs> and, did you have to audition for Goten and Videl separately, or was that? Such a good question, and I love this story. So um, I used to work for, when I was really young, I, I was hired literally off the street by Disney. And I was given my own show on, um, on Radio Disney, uh, along with a guy named Kyle Hebert, who went by the name Squeege at the time. Uh, Kyle Hebert is, by the way, he's the voice of Gohan, and he's also the narrator, or was the narrator for a long time in Z. Um, so we would do this little radio show together on Radio Disney. One day we're flipping through the paper back, that's how long ago this was. Um, and there was an ad in the newspaper for this little company in Fort Worth that was looking for people who could do cartoon voices. Uh, Kyle was, Dragon Ball Z was already on the air, um, or Dragon Ball. So he was like, no, he knew what it was, I did not. And he's like, um, we should go to this open call audition. And I was like, yeah, no, I have other things to do. Um, he talks me into it. We go into this bank, um, and it's literally a bank. It was like you know, First Nations Bank. I don't even remember. Um, we go into this bank. We go up to the third floor. There's this one tiny little recording booth. And we go in, and um, by the way, that was Funimation. Funimation was inside a bank in one tiny little room for the first like several years that we recorded Z. So the first character that I was cast as was, um, there were two characters, uh, Lime I believe was my very first one, a girl named Lime, and then Upa um, in one of the Dragon Ball movies. And then from there they were like, we're doing this uh, other audition. Uh, funny story though about that first audition, Kyle Aber showed up in a Dragon Ball fandom shirt. And so, which you never show up in a, uh, to an audition to that. So they were kind of like, eh but they cast him. Uh, and so they, uh, anyway, yeah, so we were in this little bank and then they, they did, they had me audition for both Goten and Videl um, together. And I remember when, I remember very clearly Videl. I don't remember Goten as much, but I remember when Videl came on the screen because I have long brown hair, I've got blue eyes, I've got, and, and I was young at the time. And so I remember looking up and I'm like, like, is there, is there another actor you'd consider? Like, this is me. Um, Goten, I was more confused by at first, because I was like, what do you mean girls voice boys? This wasn't something that I was aware of. Um, and so they really had to direct me. They're like, it's got to be really gravelly. It's got to be. Um, so they were directing me into this voice. Um, and I think because of Upa, like, they kind of knew, you know, where they were wanting to go with that. But um, yeah, I very much remember that first audition. And just being, we were, we were like fish out of water. We didn't know what the heck we were doing. You know, we relied so much on the directors at first. So, cool. Considering that, you know, you're part of the franchise. Yes. Do you feel that not only is it the Dragon Ball community that you're getting, like, all this fandom from, but the Toonami community as well, because Toonami and Dragon Ball are pretty much peanut butter and jelly at this point. Oh, yeah, no, I remember the first time that Toonami, and it, it may have been you guys, that you wished me happy birthday. On Twitter, and I was we like, for, Yeah, no, we try to make everyone on the 
Like, you blew my mind. I was like, how do they even know who I am? <laughs> I was like, that's so crazy. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the fandom has been incredible. And, and you can see from things like you guys wishing us happy birthday, and then we'll start getting all these happy birthday messages. And um, the online support is, is fantastic. And, and also how it translates to it's That's why I love coming to these conventions. Um, I didn't do them for a few years just because I was a mama and working. And but now my little one's a little bit older, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do some conventions again. And it's been really, it's been a really fun experience to step back into this world and see how much it's, it's changed in a very short period of time. Um, I feel like people are more, um, they know more about us. How many people have come up and asked me, like, how's your kid? How's your, uh, and again, that's all because of social media and just this um, relationship that we're able to to develop um, with each other, um, which can also lead to some kind of crazy stuff. But uh, for the most part, it's just been this rewarding experience. Um, and again, to see it come translate online, because when you see something on social media and you're seeing like, you know, Toonami Faith Floor, you're watching the different shows and you're like, but what's that like when you like get the people in, in front of you and just how wonderful everyone is, like how supportive and um, you have no idea how much the actors appreciate um, just the positivity and the support and the, the good things that you guys are putting out for us. We just appreciate that so much. Yeah, I'm glad that you like the community. Oh, I do. I do. I'm telling you, I remember the first time you wished me happy birthday and I was like, shut up, they know me. That's so crazy. <laughs> Let's take a bit of a break from talking about Dragon Ball Link now. Okay. Let's talk about a show that I consider a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine, and that is Heaven's Lost. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so, I love that show. When playing the character of Nymph, yes. what were some of the challenges that came with portraying someone that goes from being like really sadistic to yeah. practically 180ing into a more childish and cheerful yeah. persona. Yeah, a little bug. Yeah, she's super <laughs> sassy. Like, I love that character so much because she is so sassy. My challenge with Nymph and, and the episode, I mean, how could any of us forget it, um, was the horrible episode where they, they made her kill her bird, her pet bird. Um, and so that was a challenge for me because she goes from this, like, she's she's definitely more, you know, she's got all this attitude. But then she, like, that was a horrible little story art to go through and I like to bring up that emotion and have to tap into that and I'm like oh my god so I was relieved when she just was like hey, it's cool I can live without my wings and she was able to kind of just move on and and it, then we could get to the really fun stuff um, that was that show was directed by Chris Bevins who's one of my favorite people to work with and um, I, that whole series was so much fun but yeah that that bird episode and the wing episodes I was like good enough. man we are going to some dark stuff here dark yeah yeah, oh, I'm so glad you brought her up. I love that show so yeah, much. I do, too. It's a very underappreciated, good mixture of action, comedy, and drama. Yeah, it's such a fun show. Thank you. I'm so glad you brought her up. So you played Chihiro in the... Another one I love! <laughs> in the Danganronpa anime. Did you play the video game to prepare for No, I actually knew nothing about it. Because, you know, it's different actors in the video game because yeah. it was done in L.A. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know anything about the show. Ironically, another show directed by Christopher Bevins. Um, he like, I guess when he was there, he liked to cast me. Uh, that was when he just explained to me everything that was going on. And of course, in the very beginning, the first, like before we started recording, he's like, so you're gonna go through, like, here's this crazy storyline about all of these things that are gonna happen. And by the way, you're gonna die. And I was like, oh, sweet, okay, can I live first? Um, so then we, I remember just diving into it. I. People ask me all the time, is there one show that you wish you could do over again? And hands down, that's it, Danganronpa. Uh, not that I regret any choices that I made in the show. I wouldn't probably make the exact same choices. Um, we're not given, we can't know going in how these characters are going to affect people. And that is a character that has resonated with so many fans that I, I would love to revisit that character with that knowledge of how important this character is in the grand scheme of things. Um, in that, as an actor, that would be the, my favorite thing in the world to be able to do is to go in and know that something really matters. I was given that gift recently, sorry, NDA. Um, I was given that gift recently of being able to visit something I was kind of familiar with and it was like, this is like, oh, I get this. And like, then you can really bring something extra special to the role, which is such a, a beautiful thing to get to do. So, yeah, good. I like you guys are bringing up my favorite stuff. I'm going to bring it back to Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what was it like to, you know, you play Goten in the 
What was it like to kind of play off yourself in the show? It's always an interesting story when you... Okay, yeah, so that's, and in my favorite episode, I mean, the narcissist in me is like, oh my God, I love the learning to fly episode because it's me and me and so much me. Um, the, that was the first episode. When we first started recording, we were recording to VHS tape. So we would have to do our takes and then rewind the tape and then go back and then we'd have to try to line it up. And then you're, it was a mess. It was so hard to record it in the very beginning before the digital age. Um, and so that we, I would do all the characters, everything up into the Learning to Fly episode, I would go back and forth between Goten and Videl just because of the difficulty of having to rewind that VHS tape. And then we get to the Learning to Fly episode and they're like, so basically it's just you and some, some Gohan. And I was like, well, then I want to make sure that the voices are really separate. Because that was always one of my biggest fears, is I don't want anybody who's able to see this to, to know that it's the same voice actor. I, I love that. I didn't want anyone to know that. So um, I, was, I did that one separate. I went in as Goten, and then came back in as Videl, or I don't remember which order I did. But then I really liked that, and so I did that from there on out is I've kept the characters separate ever since. Is because, um, yeah, because I don't want that. And also the games, it's really hard. Like, you know, when you're doing the reactions, um, it's hard to really make sure that there's a big separation between the sounds of the two characters. It's also a challenge, and as an actor, that's really fun. Um, so, I, and that typically wouldn't happen today where you would, you know, like Chris Abbott, who's like the voice of every character. Um, <laughs> that wouldn't happen today. You're given your one character, because there's so many actors, um, you know, and for the authenticity of the show, you want everyone to be really different. So that was a gift that we got 20 years ago to be able to voice different characters within the same series. Um, it's really special. It's, it's quite an honor. So, thank you. Sure. Uh, if there's a show that you were in, whether you can talk about it, hopefully, uh, that you would like to see on Toonami, potentially? Oh. And you would be like, hey, fans, tell adults when to put this, that you can as well. I mean, I mean, honestly, any show that I'm in, <laughs> All the shows? Every show. Every single show. Um, oh, that's such a good question. Um, unfortunately, it's hard for me because I'm thinking of all the stuff I'm doing right now, which I'm not allowed to talk about. Um, a show that, uh, that hasn't been on Toonami. I mean, I know Danganronpa never was, and that's one that's touched so many people that I would love to see maybe that one get on there. Um, you know, I love Toonami. I, I'm, and I'm allowed to talk about this because you guys, I'm, I'm joining season four of uh, My Hero Academia. So I'm, that's a show that it's my first time to get to become a fan of a show before voicing a character in the show. Um, and that one's really special. So that one's already there. So I guess I don't have a good answer for that. All of them, everything I've ever done. <laughs>